Hello and welcome back, you beautiful nerds, to another edition of oh. video. Yes, on this little corner of the internet, except this time we are on the road in this incredibly brown hotel room. For the next month, Devin But Better will be happening from Beige Town, USA. No hate. I'm incredibly fucking grateful to be here. It's just everything in this place just doesn't make sense. Like, you know, those TikToks are like, things about my New York apartment that just make sense, you know? Things about my New Mexico hotel room that really don't make sense. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Devin, and every week I try to get better at adulting one try at a time. This week, we are trying to get better at multitasking, sleeping maybe. Oh God, sleeping would be wonderful. Multitasking, as in doing multiple things at once. Doing multiple things with your one brain. Just one brain. That's too hot for right now. If you're wondering why I'm here, I'm currently in New Mexico helping produce a film. Bing, bing, bing. This is an upcoming feature film with Madeline Petch and Chloe Bailey. I know, I know, I'm fangirling too. But I'm just going to say right off the bat, y'all, I'm not going to be spilling any tea on this channel or talking about this production at all. For multiple reasons, one being this is my channel and it's about me, me, and all the different parts of me, no one else. Also, I gotta stay professional. Like, I am professional bitch, first and foremost. But I do wanna share all parts of myself, and this month we are multitasking, so videos may be a little shorter or a little stupider. <laughs> but you're gonna understand, because we all multitask sometimes, you know? Like me, I'm, I'm multitasking right now because I'm still waiting for this fucking coffee. You're gonna have to, like, walk and talk with me this month because I can't just, like, sit down and light myself correctly or put on makeup. This is, this is the reason. Deal, deal. This is gonna be like Blair Witch Project kind of camera angles. But yeah, you're gonna have to come with. Let's go. <sighs> I know what you're thinking. Devin, what lighting scheme is this? Is it daylight? Are you in tungsten? I know, I know. This is just the beauty of being at this hotel. Welcome to my gym. It's a solid three-star experience, but you know what? I'm very grateful to have a gym. So if y'all came over from the Try Guys channel, you might have seen me just teach them, specifically Ned, how to pole dance. So if it's Ned, if it's someone else, I just, I, I really feel like I'm my, most myself that I'm teaching. I was surprised to see that Ned was so intimidated. He told me off camera and on camera that he was like afraid of a lot of the stuff that we're doing. I think it's much easier with, to do it with someone else. Cause you're watching each other, you're going in step, you see other people make mistakes. I'm sure he saw my ankle roll a couple times. I'm really worried about Ned's ankles because he's a soccer player. I don't want to like cripple Ned with these heels. I mean, shoes in, in my opinion, accentuate everything. Is that the Ned? Yeah, is that the Ned? So I'm really hoping that he takes breaks and doesn't put them on. But I've been pole dancing since like 2010, which is 11 years, oh my God. I've been pole dancing for more than a decade. I love the sport, I love sharing the sport, I love teaching it. And so I was very happy when I got to teach Ned uh, how to pole dance and my friend Netta, who I adore, you can find her over on Instagram at hijabalicious. She's incredible and she got to teach Keith a thing or two about what she does in the pole. And that's what I love about it so much. We all do something different, we all invent our own tricks and choreography and we share it with each other. We all have different styles and different takes, which is one of the reasons why I love the sport so much. Okay, we're multitasking, so I actually have to work out because this is probably going to be the last time I work out this week because I've got 5.30 a.m. calls on set. <laughs> all right, I'm back. Back from the gym and the shower. So if y'all saw the Try Guys video, you'll notice that I didn't really have the time to go over the history of pole dancing, which I think is really important because it's not what you think. So starting back in the 12th century, Chinese acrobatics started using a pole. Oh my God. <clears throat> Are you okay? Babe, you good? 
So Paul was introduced to Chinese acrobat as a way to strength train. They started using it as its own acrobatic skill, like its own acrobatic performance. The poles themselves were lined with rubber, which is different from what we have today. And the acrobats themselves would actually be fully clothed and they would like flip and jump off the pole. And we still have a lot of Chinese pole influence in the sport today. What I love about the research that I found is that the Chinese acrobats, even though they were fully clothed, they used to get marks on their bodies and they used them as a badge of honor, as a way to tell people that they were pole dancers or pole acrobats. Whee! You know? Okay, Goyles, we put on a bra. So the next bit of history about pole you should know about is we're gonna scoot on over to the other side of Asia, to India. There's a form of Indian pole dancing. Over 800 years ago, the Indians developed their own pole traditions. The sport was intended to train wrestlers with literal translation of Malakam being wrestler of the pole. Those training would play competitively on a smooth wooden pole, thick at the bottom and then narrow on top, becoming pole flip specialists onto the pole. What I love about these facts are most of the people who were doing this sport originally were men. And when we think about pole dancing today in the modern sense, we think about like sexy women undulating. Ooh. So you may be wondering when the pole made the transition from like a strength training device and exercise to the vehicle of seduction it is now. Over time, pole dancing started to kind of merge with other forms of sensuous dance. These performances of sensuous dance would usually happen on the road through circus acts. The pole was introduced because the pole was a part of the tent and the circus. And the folks who made the pole officially a part of the routine were known as the hoochie coochie dancers. That's right. You heard me, hoochie coochie, great marketing. The group originated during the American depression in the 1920s when dancers traveling in fairs would use a lot of suggestive dancing and hip movement, entertaining crowds within the tent. And then they started dancing around the pole, holding the tent up. One thing that I'd like to make clear about mainstream pole fitness is sometimes you'll find companies that really like to distance themselves from stripper culture. And I just want to say off the bat, nah, -uh, nah. Uh -uh. We ain't doing that here. We have to pay homage to our godmothers of this movement. The gals, gays, and theys who put this movement on their backs for so long and carried it into the modern day. Like, God bless them. But who do you think created all of those moves? And who do you think taught them to other people and passed them down through oral history and just one-on-one -on -one lessons? Strippers, my guy. Strippers. Strippers were doing that. Uh, I'm sweating because... That conversation gets me heated. Let's back up really fast and go back to like the 1950s, 1960s in San Francisco. And I want to introduce you to a woman named Carol Dota. Watch this interview with her. Carol, what do you think of uh, the New York topless? I think it's fantastic. I'm ready to leave right now. She's like ridiculous. Carol, would you go topless if you walked into the Copa? Well, that ah! remains to be seen. What a ridiculous answer. Was he inviting the girls to come to the park in his topless career? Oh, just they measure up right. Like, do you measure up? I mean, at least she was being practical, I guess. She was like, listen, men like tits. Straight men like tits. Everyone loves tits. She was doing that in the 60s. Like, wow. Anyways, Carol Dota made international news when she became the first woman in America to put on a topless strip show in 1964 in San Francisco at the Condor Club. She was like on the sign. You, you can see a picture of her there. Those tits were just waving people in. She was the marketing budget, if you know what I mean. Anyways, Carol Dota kind of brought stripping into mainstream culture, which is funny because this tour through history of pole, I've actually been putting my clothes on. Let's show the look, you guys. I got some jeans on, mom jeans on, just so everyone knows that I mean business on set and a onesie because I just, I can't be bothered. It has been another long, exhausting day on set, and I so wish I had the energy and chutzpah to even think about going to explore the Albuquerque pole dance scene. It's out there. I know it is. I've actually researched some studios. I've seen that there's a studio called Black Widow Pole Arts that I would love to go visit. But instead, I'm just going to fall in the bed and watch some of these favorite pole dancers. These are their Instagram handles right here. Ding, 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 ding. If you're interested in the things that I've been spewing <laughs> for the past like seven years, check out these people because we're the same mind. And I've been inspired by these folks on Instagram, on social media recently. All right, you beautiful nerds. Ah, I gotta get to bed because we have another early call time tomorrow. But I love y'all and I will see you next week.